heard a shout from the outside partially muffled by the stirring desert wind. There was a stranger out there, wandering about, and like myself, seemed lost in body and in mind. I flagged them down and brought them into the tower, asylum for their thoughts. This stranger seemed familiar, and I immediately trusted them. A relief, knowing that I'll have some help. I'll always remember his face the very first moment he remembered something about his past. You turned with a confused smile. Every piece of stonework, pebble, even the grains of sand seemed new yet familiar. Ah, of course, you said as you picked up a nearby rock. Seems the earth speaks to me. I point at the ridge in the stone. See here? The different ridges and pits. Each one is a story unto itself. Rocks have long lived memories. Better than any map or star. Oh! That's a hell of a skill. So you got a yes and in that and you're flavoring it with um, with that kind of archaic approach. Dope. OK. And that's going to come in handy because the further we go out and the places we discover, we're going to need that that insight, that knowledge of, of the land because we're building. We're building the land. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can't have us getting lost on the way back home. That That's just not that wouldn't be fun. <laughs> <laughs> So you remember your you remember your character's name is Cobble. That's cool. Is that inspired by anything? That is from looking at the cobblestones of the tower. Oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> our current, really, our current objective, besides from getting you up to snuff, and we're going to do that through the Discord server. Um, our current objective also is to get some food. I'm not starving yet. We haven't asked a question to see if you were. You possibly might be because you came from outside too. Um, I, we can ask that question before I jump off here. But I want to get some food. Uh, so I'm hoping I'm hoping um, either a rumor will come through that can lead us to uh, seeing what we can bring back to the to the tower. Uh, or we'll just have to go out and see what we find while looking, you know, while jumping into other things. But the objective is food because it's not a, it's not urgent now, but eventually it will be. Yeah. And hopefully my skill is uh, good enough that I'll, that we, I'll be able to point us in the direction of food. Yeah. Regardless of what kind. Yes. Definitely going with likely odds on on this. Yes. I think that's I think I may have went with that, too. Yes, but... but. Hmm, what you think? I'm guessing my curiosity about this place is is a little bit more pressing to me right now. Right. Now that I've gotten a, a taste of, of a memory, like, okay, maybe... Like, I can push off the hunger for, for maybe a, maybe like an hour or so at the, at the most. But it's... I'm still hungry. So. Right, right, right. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay. I'm trying to remember if I saw any food <laughs> on that dude's table. Cause that, yo, hit the inside of the cave was stacked. It was stacked. Let me see if I recall, as opposed to going out aimlessly and looking for a place, we may be able to, Depending on what we learn about you, we may be able to go back and handle those others. Maybe steal some food from there. Yeah, and if I'm not necessarily the most uh, <laughs> violent of individuals, I might be a, a bit sneaky with my skills. Yes. I'm pretty. Yeah. Yeah. This was a lot for Kabul, but he was slowly gathering himself and coming around. He knew enough about himself to know he wasn't a fighter in the least. His memories, we'll say, were a bit more complex, and so it was better for him to stay behind, take it slow. Cobble uh, is starving, and 
when Cobble, um, eventually me and Cobble are going to go out and, and do some, uh, some exploring ourselves, but, you know, I have some time to kill. Uh, I'm going to go see if maybe I can find anything. I'm not going to go too far, though. I just want to go out, take a look around, you know, get some fresh air, you know, you know, stretch my legs a bit. And if I happen to find some food, uh, that, that would be great. That would be great. I'm going to go south. I'm going to take a look south. Not going to go too far, but I'm just going to take a look. See what's going on. See what I can find. See if I can find some food. Yeah. So I'm just going to go look for some food. Or some kind of valuables. So that I can maybe trade and get foods or something. You know, just going to just going to take a look around. I feel like I'm talking myself into it. I head south. I walk for about 30 minutes. Um, do I encounter any any uh, possible food source using my um, knowledge of desert survival? You know, I want to go out and use my desert survival to see if there is anything um, that could potentially lead me to some to some food. But I want to I need to find a good place to survey. You know, you can't just walk out and uh, immediately know this. I would imagine I would need to encounter some traces of something or some, you know, maybe a, even if it's just a vantage point. Unless, of course, you know, I'm lucky and I do encounter something right on my front doorstep. But I'm going to head out 30 minutes just to get a lay of the land. No real change in geography. 30 minutes out on foot. Um Using my desert survival, is there any trace of food that I can find? Um, I'm going to say because of my desert survival that I would pick up on things that a normal person might not be able to pick up on just because I'm favorable in that skill. Let's see what happens. I'm going to say the odds of me finding something, at least even at minimum, if it's a lead. Let's say a lead, you know, let's make, you know, I want to look for a lead. Uh, to potentially find me, whether it be live food or some plants or something, who knows? This is a fantasy world. I'm willing to create everything. So um, am I able to get some sort of lead uh, 30 minutes out into the desert? I'm going to say likely. I'm going to say the odds of that are likely. Let's I asked the meta black. What are the odds? Here we go. Yes, I do encounter something. OK. Okay. Um, and is this, is this by chance, uh, you know, I'm wondering, is this, this kind of lead, is it a lead that's going to be, is it a trace of something? Is it a, uh, is it something that's going to lead me to some, some pl uh, non, uh, something that's not alive, <laughs> maybe some plants or maybe some kind of a uh, food resource, or is it going to lead me to something live? Um, what, what kind of lead is this? What kind of lead is this? Smelly. Okay, is this by chance did I did I encounter some sort of um, creature carcass? Some somewhat likely. No, is this uh, is it something that's alive? 50 50. No, but. Is this some kind of, you know, full uh, floor or something of the desert? Um, I'm gonna say likely. Yes. And it's smelly, and this is the lead. Um using my 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 desert survival skill, do I immediately know what this thing is? Matter of fact, no, let me what does it look like? What does this thing look like? Smooth, sorry, it's smelly, it's smooth. Simple. Graceful. Okay, Sim smooth, simple, and graceful. With my desert survival, my favorable desert survival, um, do I know what this thing is? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say very likely. Yeah, I definitely know what it is. And then some, um, Okay. 
I, I'm getting, I'm getting her. So in the desert, this is some kind of uh, plant that I'm not even going to say a plant. Is it, is it, is it a plant? It's somewhat unlikely. Yes, it's definitely a plant. Um, and it's, it's definitely a plant. All right. And, it, and it's, it's, it's more like our, it's under the ground. It's under the sand. It comes out of the sand. It doesn't grow up. It kind of comes out of the sand. Um, and it is, uh, in terms of sim, it's a very simple, it's very smooth. It looks, it's, it's, uh, it has a very simple design about it. So, um, I'm going to say that it has some sort of pattern, like a very simple pattern on the, on it, on its smooth, uh, kind of root like structure that goes in and out of the ground. Um, real smoothly like a, like a, almost like a, like little it forms like arcs I'm going to say this thing forms arcs in the sand it goes in and out of the sand it forms arcs it's a plant and it has a, it has an interesting pattern on it um, it's a simple pattern it's a simple pattern that also um, it's mysterious it's a mysterious pattern because the pattern is so simple that it can't be nature it almost looks like uh it was it was painted that way and that's that's what's so mysterious about it it's mysterious simple patterns like really graceful uh roots that are under the sand graceful roots that are under the sand um with a with a weird like a very strange design it's smelly, but I have a feeling this thing doesn't smell bad, though. Does it smell bad? 50-50. Yes. What does it smell like? Oily, lazily, oddly slash feeble. It's a very odd, potent smell that... Potent in terms of... You know, it almost it can make you weak in, in the knees. It can make you go. It can, you know, it can have. It can. It's a really strong smell um, that can make you weak in the knees if you, you know, if you get a good whiff of it. And I see these. You know, as I approach, as I'm walking, I start to see, you know, these roots, pale red, wispy roots that gracefully flow in and out of the sand. Um, are they, are they big? I, I'm gonna say they're likely. Yes, def they're very big. The diameter of a tree is how is the diameter of one of these roots. What else do I know of these things? Truths slash weapons. Truths slash weapons. Um people do not strike these. People do not strike these um because something bad happens. So fifty fifty. Yes. So people do not, uh, they don't strike them because does it release? Why don't people strike them? Kill slash wishes. I, I really want to get real, but I really want to go bizarre with this. Um, striking these with your, you know, attacking these things is terrible luck. It destroys your fortune. It, it curses you and uh, it kills your it kills all possibility of your wishes coming true your wishes as in things that you want right then and there depending on right then and there all of your wants are gone they will not happen they anything that was good happening for you or anything that you've ever wanted anything that you ever wanted is now not going to happen. <laughs> is this something that has been proven? Or is it just a rumor? Is this, is this just like superstition? Likely. Yes. But most people believe it. Likely. Yes. Do I believe it? Has there ever been an experience that has happened in my past that would lead me to believe that this that this is in fact true 
50-50. Yes, and I've experienced it personally. Not me, but I, someone close, to, someone that was close to me, it has happened to. Like, it, it, I've seen it happen. Like, I can confirm <laughs> that I, this is true. So if anyone ever asks me about these things, I'm going to tell them it's true. So it's uh, it's superstition. Pale red roots. Do they have any effect on the desert itself? Likely. Yes. A rather large impact on the desert. And what is that impact? Heal slash information. How can I interpret information? How else does it affect it? Recruit slash opposition. It is attached to something that is living. The, the red, the paleness of the red roots are a, are a reflection of this, this thing's health. It's overall health. And this thing will say um, lives under the desert, lives under the desert. And you can and, you know, you can tell its health based off of how these roots appear. That is the information that you can get. And it is as long as this creature is healthy and alive. The desert will be healthy and alive recruit slash opposition the desert by the desert being alive it, it's, it's a good thing because the question was how does does this positively affect the desert and it was a, it definitely positively affects the desert I learned that this these roots are, are symbolize the health of whatever they're attached to and I rolled recruit slash opposition if this thing is alive and that's good and it's positively affecting the desert in turn things that need the desert benefit from this thing being alive whatever these plant this plant is and so there are plenty of recruits and things willing to attack and defend anything opposing the desert and or the plant roots what are these roots called well now that we're this these roots are attached to a, a, actually a giant plant this is now a creature i'm going to roll to see what this creature looks like i'm going to name the creature and then that's going to help me name what the what the roots of the creature are called <laughs> oh, i love these rabbit holes um what does this creature look, do? Does does my uh, desert survival know what this creature of the desert is? Likely. Yes. What does it look like? Amorphous. Feminine. Nightmarish. Is it some sort of queen? Very likely. No, but no, but it it can it reproduce or whatever plants whatever plants can do. I don't know. Does this thing reproduce or or replicate itself? Fifty fifty. No. Celebrate slash dispute. The Meta Black is trying to tell me that it has a personality that is almost like that of a um, a, a, a monarch. And when I interpret celebrate dispute as celebrating a dispute, you know, that's a human quality, you know, relishing in drama or, um, you know, enjoying disputes and, and you know, celebrating is an act is a reaction of something. Celebrating a dispute 
kind of to me spells out something that likes to get into quarrels um, for any reason. Amorphous. So it's probably a very like bulbous looking tree. And nightmarish. It's night like it looks like something from your nightmares. What does it look like? Delightfully lonely. Yeah, I bet there's nothing probably around it. It's the only thing of its kind. Is it the only of it? Is it only? Is it the only thing of its kind? Is it just one? Is there just one of these things? Likely. Yeah, and there's always just been one. Um, how else can we describe this nightmarish plant creature? Or how, how do we describe it? Aggressively mysterious. Okay, so there's not much known about it. Like, it, it, and anyone who has tried to learn about it has met, has died. Okay. Aggressively mysterious, meaning there's absolutely nothing of, we know about it. Does it have a negative effect on its denizens? 50 50. Yes, and it does, and all the time. <laughs> okay, what can this thing, what can this giant tree do? Enhance immune. It enhances, it enhances itself in the desert, the desert's immunity. Immunity to what? <laughs> I'm sure we'll find out, but. That's probably one of its abilities. Okay, what what else can it do? Sleep. Exotic. It's it can exude exotic some sort of exotic maybe toxin or pollen. Is this is this some kind of spore? Like uh very uh let's say likely. It's some it can exude some it can spray. Is it a spray? 50-50. No. <sighs> Something, it does some kind of exotic uh, toxin. But how, how how does it administer that? Let's see. How, how does it administer that? Change slash home. It it can it can administer. This is its home. It can administer that how it however it wants. It can change it change. I mean, this thing is having a negative impact on people in the desert all the time. Does it have anything to do with that with that sleep effect? Likely. Yes. Does it have anything to do? Because remember the sun, the sunlight even has an effect on you in the, in the desert. It, it, it tires you the hell out. It makes you woozy and fatigued. Man, could the sun have some sort of effect on this on this plant creature, this, this tree? Is there any connection between what the sun does to you and this plant? Fifty-fifty. Uh, somewhat unlikely. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not connected. <laughs> so, what is this? What is this tree doing? Um, how does this tree have an effect? Negative effect on the people of the desert all the time. The base slash nature. Does it? Does it attack and debase? Are are uh, are living and attempts at living here? It's likely. Yes. And I'm assuming that people have found a way to coexist with this thing, and evade and avoid death. Very likely. Yes. Does it matter where you are? Like. 
Is it, does it only attack you if you're near it or does it attack you anywhere? Does it attack you anywhere in the desert or can it attack you anywhere in the desert? Unlikely. No, and only when you're near it. Very likely. Yeah. How much of the, does it take up a lot of the desert? Its territory? Does its territory take up a lot of the desert? Unlikely. No. Event, neglect, slash, liberty. As um, I interpret that as, as I am, you know, studying this thing I have yet to name, um, my neglect of my surroundings because based because of my freedom my freedom out here I neglected uh, the responsibility of being aware of my surroundings and that it's not safe especially alone um, and something is happening I'm going to roll a plot first I'm going to roll a theme and then I'm going to roll a plot point to see what is happening And my quest to, to search for food. Action. Shady places. Is something up here? Is something hovering above? Is something approaching that's creating an, a shadow over above me? Very likely. Yes. Am I able to recall the name of these roots before, <laughs> before I have to, am I able to recall, did I ever recall the name of these roots? Very likely. Yeah. All right. These roots of this tree, we're going to say that these roots are fingers of whatever this tree is called, this plant, this plant creature. Ooh, I, I can't, I'm thinking of blood dried, coagulated blood. Um or some sort of plasma, but like, a, you know, maybe like a red coagulated blood sap. Uh, it's all dried up because it's in the desert. This bulbous plant creature, living creature. I can't help but think of a, a wound, an open wound. A peduncle. A peduncle is a stalk bearing a flower or fruit. Or the main stalk of an inflorescence. Peduncle. I like f the festering peduncle. The festering peduncle. Amorphous, feminine, nightmarish. A gigantic, bulbous, eerie desert plant rooted deep in the heart of the desert. Only one exists. Its origins are widely unknown. It strengthens the immunities of the inhabitants and denizens of the desert and is thus protected by many. It can administer exotic sleep effects in various ways. Rumors say harming its roots will bring upon abysmal misfortune. Thanks for watching Peoples and Dragons. If you're enjoying the show, maybe like and subscribe. If you have some time to dive into some more solo role-playing adventures, check out Ink and Bones. Ink and Bones is an anthology-like, roguelike fiction fantasy pod letter, podcast and newsletter, uh, as well as a collection of fantasy stories derived from tabletop games that's pretty active and updated regularly. Just a little gem that I stumbled upon that someone put me on to, uh, and I didn't want to be the only one who knew about it. So, link in the description. I'll see you all in the meta black.